This case is a woman who wants the final definite answer. And so this is a 61-year-old woman who had a spontaneous increase in her left breast size. She had a textured implant in the left breast in 2012 and a smooth in the right. She, in 2016, underwent a contralateral prophylactic right mastectomy with immediate tissue with implant, and the left Im breast implant was switched from silicone to a textured one. She now came in in the fall of 2019 with a spontaneous increase in the size of her left breast. 10 to 15 cc's was aspirated from a seroma, and three different aspirations were performed. On October 9th, the PET was done. She had a biopsy on the 11th and the 15th of October. And on October 17th, she presented to the Mayo Clinic Lymphoma Clinic, and she returned on November 22nd of 2019. Her exam was unremarkable. Her laboratory studies were unremarkable. She had a normal LDH. Past medical and surgical history, not remarkable. And so these, these are our questions. And so uh, we'll go first to the uh, pathology, please. I mean, to radiology, please. Okay, so we have that single uh, PET CT from 10919. Uh, you can see there's circumferential FTG activity surrounding the uh, left breast, and also numerous uh, FTG have a in the chest. Just some representative samples of that uh, circumferential breast tissue. It's most avid, uh, kind of deep to the implant. Um, SCD max was seven. In the lymph nodes, this is the lymph node that was in the left internal mammary uh, chain uh, that was sampled. SCD max was 13.6. Measure approximately 13 millimeters in short axis. And then another lymph node, um, just from the uh, subcranial region, uh, SCD max was 13.7 in short axis, was 12 millimeters. Um, in terms of, there was one other lymph node uh, down in the periportal region. Measure about 14 millimeters. SCV max was just above uh, blood pool at 3.7. Uh, it's indeterminate, may just be uh, reactive, um, but uh, just uh, it wasn't highlighted in the, in the report, in the initial report. Uh, breast MRI just demonstrated this surrounding soft tissue, uh, demonstration enhancement uh, following gadolinium. That is it. Beautiful arrows. Can we see the pathology, please? Hi, everyone. Becky King from King Path. Um, so we're going to, the lymph nodes that were sampled were all reactive. Um, we're going to focus today on the first, the aspiration that was done um, from the left breast in September, tw on September 20th of 2019, and then the follow-up uh, capsulectomy. So the aspirate that was done, so when these aspirates are done, it's a liquid specimen. So it's, you know, not really amenable to, um, to formal infixation, but what they do is create something called a cell block which basically spins down um, the fluid and fixes it into um, a, a tissue block format. And so this is what this looks like. So most of this pink stuff is just serum. Um, so what we want to look at are the cells here. Um, and I think you can automatically see why these specimens can be extremely challenging. Um, there's not many cells to begin with. The cells that are here um, often, as in this case, show some degree of sort of cellular um, degeneration. So the sort of nuclei are not clear. There's a lot, of, like I said, of this um, serum fibrin in the background. Um, the cells of interest are these sort of slightly larger cells here. We've got our definitely small reactive lymphocytes here. And the cells that were noted by the pathologist who reviewed this at the time were these cells, which sort of are a little bit larger, have sort of indented nuclei. Um, when the stains were done on this specimen, um, and again, at one of the challenges of these specimens is really you can't follow necessarily a cell population very well. This is CD3. So you can see there are lots of T cells. Um, the cells are all kind of shrunken down, so it's a little bit difficult to say if there's any large cells in here. You do get the hint that maybe there are some um, slightly larger T cells here. This is CD30. Um, so we're thinking, obviously, about a breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and um, those would be strongly CD30 positive. So you can see that most of the cells in here are CD30 negative, but as we scan around, there are occasional cells that are CD30 positive, although it's hard to really get a sense of, you know, what the, what the architecture of these cells is. And so this was um, very appropriately signed out as suspicious, um, 
are as atypical, you know, suspicious for a, a T cell lymphoma, but we can't we can't diagnose it on this. Um, and so her capsulectomy was performed, and um, multiple sections of the capsule were um, taken. And as you can see, um, there's certainly thickening of this um, fibrous capsule around that was around the implant. Um, this is fairly, um, there's always some degree of fibrous thickening around these implants, but this is um, a bit more impressive than usual, which probably accounts for what was seen on PET. You can see that what's really accounting for this thickening is this marked granulomatous inflammation with multinucleated giant cells. So really just a very impressive reaction to her implant. Um, the body's saying there's a really big foreign body here and we're going to try to get rid of it. Um, and so that's what it's kind of doing here and walling it off. Um, the place to really look for um, breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma is right along the surface of the um, capsule. So the implant would have sat out here and this is sort of the edge of this capsule. Um, and it's Again, these are, can be challenging to look at because there's all kinds of cells here that are, can be hard to identify. Most of these actually are histocytes and occasional reactive small lymphocytes. Um, and so there were no infiltrates seen in the sections taken that were concerning, but a CD30 was performed on this. Um, and, you know, CD30, of course, not specific for anaplastic large cell lymphoma. We can see um, scattered CD30 positive cells throughout here. Um, I lost my arrow somewhere in there, but there we go. Um, but really not at the surface of the capsule where we would expect to see a lar an anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And these are not large enough um, and ple or pleomorphic enough to be um, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and they're not forming a mass. So this is consistent with, you know, scattered reactive T cells and histiocytes, some more histiocytes staining here for CD30, um, but no lymphoma was identified. And so in the context of the capsulectomy, we're comfortable that the initial specimen, um, that those CD30 positive cells are reactive. So I thought we would just have a brief discussion about this entity. We visited this over the last six years, once or twice before, um, and this happened to be a woman who's the wife of a pathologist, so I've also used the tumor board as a way of vetting cases that there still remain questions because she came to me and said, look, my path report says this. And uh, and so um, the uh, this entity fits under anaplastic large cell lymphoma. They present with seroma. They're all textured that have been reported to date. Uh, and I don't think to date there's been a smooth implant <coughs> reported yet, unless I could be corrected there. This was a updated paper in 2014. There's another paper that came out around uh, 2017 or so, a larger series. But um, this was a review of all the published cases, uh, capsulectomy and implant removal in 56 of 60. Uh, interestingly, 78% were treated with chemo. And, the initial report of this actually came from our institution and everybody got some treatment on that basically. Uh, didn't matter what you got, you did okay. Uh, the In 93% of the patients with disease confined to the fibrous capsule achieved a CR compared with 13 of 18 with, tu with a tumor mass. And so the proper management is limited to capsulectomy and implant removal if, if that, that, that's the entity. I've seen a handful of these, nobody's seen a lot, that this was one of the first I've seen, the only one I've seen that we have this initial tissue that suggests it is, and then all of a sudden we go to surgery and it's not there. Uh, and this has a, it used to be that what happened was the plastic surgeons would aspirate the breast and they'd go to the sink and the fluid would go. So after the paper from the group here in 2008, all of a sudden it went to pathology rather than to the sink. Uh, this was a uh, Andy Feldman, uh, the senior author of this paper on genetic uh, subtyping, and the stat three, uh, 100%, uh, 27 out of 27. Otherwise, uh, not much that was interesting. Um, this is a much different entity than uh, 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 the ELK negative uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma, as many of you know. And we 
to, to visit the DSP 22 and TP 63 story before and won't uh, go through that. This was the paper uh, in 2008. Um, and uh, the incidence is probably still at number three out of 100 million per year. And it has a really interesting history uh, uh, over time. And so I'll just open this up for discussion and um, comments. So in the end, you didn't call this cancer, is that right? Correct. So did you do, is there any reason to do like mutation studies or molecular studies to see if it's got a, are you just all basing it on morphology? Um, there's no real, you mean like clonality studies or? Well, do there's you. no specific mutations that we would be looking for here. Um, no, in the end, it's it's a morphologic diagnosis and immunophenotypic. But, yeah. so I, think, uh, okay. I think the, the problem was that uh, the initial thing was just uh, cytology plus cell block, and so you couldn't see any kind of architectural pattern. So it was truly uh, a matter of is it a cytologically abnormal enough to call it uh, lymphoma. I, I was worried about it, but did not think you could pull the trigger. Consider the possibility of doing T cell gene rearrangements on uh, that initial specimen. The problem on that was that if we did not get a clonal T cell gene rearrangement, I did not know if that would be a true negative, and thus uh, I would not have called it absolutely negative. On the alternative side, if we got a positive T cell gene arrangement, I didn't uh, think that that would be enough for me to call it a, a true positive, and thus I thought it, it would just confuse. Reactive. Yes, it would just confuse matters if I ordered T cell gene arrangements. So, are we going to do any genetic subtyping on these when we see these relative to Andy's paper? No, so they're all triple negative, meaning that they're negative for ALK rearrangements, DUS22 rearrangements, and TP63 rearrangements, so there's no reason to do the fish when we see them. Other questions or comments? So the last little comment, I was at a uh, uh, meeting in uh, Rome back this September, and one of the pathologists I sit next to is Stefano Polari, and he's probably the preeminent uh, uh, hematopathologist in Italy, and he is heading a group that's doing a nationwide study on uh, breast implant associated uh, anaplastic large cell lymphoma in Italy, which he said is a bigger problem there than in other countries because 58% of women in Italy have breast implants. Well, I think the other, I didn't put this in, but there's been an FDA. I, I don't think there are any more textured implants out in the market as of uh, 2019. I didn't update that slide, but I, I, and I think they're now off the market. It, it's been a very fascinating story because one of the leading implant uh, uh, manufacturers also had Botox. And so if you've got an implant, you've got free Botox. <laughs> so so I, I gave a couple of presentations of this on a board Coleman's meeting through the years. Uh, and uh, so I followed the, his, the history of this. I think by 2019, it's become much clearer and much less controversial. Uh, any other comments by anyone? <laughs> Sparrow, Middlesex, any? So what are you going to do next? And her? Nothing. Still got lymphadenopathy and metastinum. You're going to repeat the pattern. We, we biopsied the heck out of that. That woman, we didn't go through the pathology. But <coughs> that was, it's granulomatous. But, I mean, are you going to repeat it? Are you just going to let it go? I think she just. I would just watch her because they got so much tissue. It was unbelievable, and we didn't go through all those the details. <laughs> but that was the other confusing part of that case. I mean, that uh, as a, from a radiologic perspective in this disease. It wasn't very straightforward.